Hi, my name is Lenka. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Bolivia. Well, I was born here in La Paz City, one of the seven wonder cities in the world. I decided to go to Buenos Aires and study professional acting and fashion production. I did my technical degree, then I moved back to Bolivia and I began my degree on international affairs. I've been working lately as a model. Bolivia is multi-ethnic, pluricultural, and absolutely and wonderfully diverse. Uh, Miss Universe was a completely different experience for me because I never thought that I could be a beauty queen for many reasons. First, because I was convinced that the way you look was more important than the way you act or what you knew about anything. But when my sister competed on 2016, I was able to relearn this space. And recently, on 2020, I was able to take this platform to talk about difficult issues, such as the way land is managed in Bolivia, such as different sustainable alternatives, as Huertos Urbanos Bolivia, that is my my non-governmental, non-profit foundation. Um, representing a nation and uh, representing your country, being named after your country, being Bolivia for the world, on the eyes of the world, is the experience that I'm never going to forget because people was able to understand what we are, how we live, and how hard we work to reach our goals as Bolivians. Well, Huertos Urbanos is uh, it's an initiative I began like three years ago. It wasn't formal at the beginning, but with time I understood the need on having social media and on creating content about this. And when the Miss Universe began, I thought it was going to be not as important as other projects because all of the candidates got amazing things to do. But as the competition began, I started to notice that this ecological, sustainable alternative that was meant to fight hunger was really important. And the way it changed all over 150 families' lives all over Bolivia and all over Latin America because I've been having messages from all of, all of these countries, from, from Mexico, from Venezuela, from Argentina, from Brazil. Everyone was really excited with Urban Orchards, with Huertos Urbanos. So this honor I received was a recognition of the social impact that Huertos Urbanos has been having the past journey, the past years, not only here in Bolivia, but for our so, but, but for this security on, on nutrition and on alimentary issues. Food security, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Huertos Urbanos was born because it was important for me not to let people be hungry. I suffered from this when I was little. My family lived a really really dramatic experience with this. My father got sick when I was little, and uh, when he recovered, it was never the same, and it is never going to be the same. For him, it is really hard to walk, and uh, he's an architect. When he worked, when he was supervising, when he was trying to make a living, people talked about him like he wasn't able to actually work on what he loved, and this basically made a mark in my life in which me and my sisters wanted to make the difference. And that's why we work in what we do. Um, we have projects from all of these things <laughs> in, in different parts, not only in Bolivia, but um, my older sister, for example, in Spain. And uh, my sister, the one in the middle, the one that is a doctor, that is always helping um, people. So this made a mark in my life. and. As it was hard for us, I decided, okay, now that I have the means, now that I have people that is helping me, I need to do something about this. Huertos Urbanos promotes orchards, but community orchards. People need to be 
communicating, need to be talking, need to be together, need to be getting together. But the pandemic was actually the boost for people to understand how important it was to be cultivating at home, to be cult cultivating in the middle of the city. Okay, uh, my short term, my short term goals with Urban Orchards would be first to reach this legal figure on NGO that is in the process, but it's always um, a bureaucratic system. I mean, everything is bureaucratic and I understand why this is important. And we are doing all of the documentation and all the work for this to happen. So yes, this is a short term. I think it would be no more than a year, eight months, a year. And also to be able to create the green found for urban orchards. So we are able to help people all over Bolivia to develop their own initiative on green projects. And on the long term, as I said it before, for my organization to be able to reach in the next eight to 10 years from 14 to 20 countries on America. And if it's possible, why not the five continents? As you have been wondering, the social impact award in Miss Universe was something really hard to get, but I think it was hard work. I have been working with the foundation, with the organization, with a lot of people that is really smart on designing sustainable projects. And also I have been having a lot of support from not only my agency, but my family. All the hard work and all the support from Bolivia. That's how this prize was, was reached. But on the Miss Universe platform, during the pageant, it was different. I remember I was talking with Miss Belize. We were having fun, we were just on the stage. The top 10 was already called. We were dancing because I remember the, there was a choreography. I'm not a really nice dancer, but we were having fun on the stage. And the choreographer put his hand like this, Miss Bolivia, come with me. And I thought that he was taking me out of the stage because I was talking too much. So I was like, no, I, I promise I'm, I'm not going to talk anymore. I, I'm going to stay still. I'm going to stay still here and I'm just going to smile. And he was like, no, come here with me. And he took me to the front of the stage. I didn't know what was going on. I mean, we never knew this prize was going to be given on this universe. It was a total surprise. And uh, I remember looking at the current Miss Universe at that time that was Sosibini Tunzi. I saw her and she was coming with the prize. And I was like, what's this? What's going on? And uh, I saw the video. I saw, well, the amazing, the amazing Miss Smart video that it was one of the sponsors of Miss Universe. And I just started pouring. I, I couldn't help it. I just cried and cried and cried. And when she gave me the prize, I listened. I, I was always looking back. When they, when they took me to that spot, I was looking back because all of the girls were like, what, what's going on? What's going on, Bolivia? I was like, I don't understand what's going on. And when I got the prize, all the girls were like, let's go hack her, let's go hack her. But we had to be biosecure and we were not wearing the mask at that moment on the stage. So they couldn't come. But when I went out, all the girls just came and hugged me. It was really emotional and a total surprise, as I said. As I said. Puertos Urbanos is an initiative that was born because we start planting at home. And we realized how this changed the way we perceived food, and we perceived also our environment. And we realized that this was needed. This was needed not only in Bolivia, but in all Latin America because of the food security crisis that we are going through right now. So we began with the process on holding the non-governmental organization. And all of this process is right now ending on the marvelous group of people working for food security all over Bolivia, and we hope for it to be all over Latin America and then on the whole world. And that's the message that I wanna give the whole world. You don't need to be a public figure. You, not, you don't need to be famous to make the difference. I would like to 
leave on this world a mark, a, a legacy on uh, alternatives, sustainable alternatives. I want people to be able to make their own choices. I want people to be able to live a happy life, not worrying about what my family is gonna, gonna be having tomorrow. And if I have to leave a legacy in this world, it would be for no one in this world to be ever hungry ever again. And that would be my legacy. To little girls, to girls that are right now competing on different pageants all over the world, I will tell them not to look to be a beauty queen, but to get a cause near your heart and work all your soul on it. Because that's the actual positive influence you can make and that's actually why you should be a public figure, to be working with people, to be helping your community, to be making the difference. When someone asked me, how do you describe yourself? That was really hard. On Miss Universe, that's actually one of the main questions they do. So I spent months trying to understand how would I be able to in a really comfortable way talk about myself. And a friend told me, but you are crazy. You are always trying to change everything because you are always on this sense on what is right, what is justice, what needs to be done. And that's how I came with the word revolutionary. And I fully feel represented with this. I was never fitted, I was never the kind of girl that fitted in and Every time I see something that's wrong, I just can't shut up. That, that's not me. I need to speak up. I need to take the space. I need to do something. And that's revolutionary in the world we live in right now. Yes, it would be amazing to end up hunger. It would be amazing to end up all illness. It would be amazing to, to end up poverty all over the world. But we need to learn from this. This is how everything has been moving. And the only thing that we can actually do is educate ourselves, give a space for others to actually educate, but with not taboos, with not stops, with none, uh, none of these specific lines of education, open education. And that's how we are going to change the world. These magic ones, I would name these magic ones edu education. That would be the name of this magic one, to be honest. Being on the summit was a feel of pure adrenaline, a little bit of fear, because you need to be balanced. You need to be aware on everything that is around you. But it's also an experience for life, to be able to see everything so close from home to just understand that this is a small part of the world, but it has everything. It was, oh my God, a feel of freedom, moving your hands and being able to feel the wind in every single inch of your body is wonderful. On our way down to the mountain, we felt this really uncomfortable feeling the hunger is. No, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. We felt hungry because we were doing a lot of effort. So we were looking for a restaurant that can actually show something fun but traditional and at the same time characteristic on how we have been trying everything around the city. And we went to Boo Boo's to, to try this health combo challenge. And there was a burger rice and wings, all of them dipped on an ulupika sauce that was as spicy as, oh my God. And I don't know how, but the challenge was to eat all of this on only five minutes. I think I wasn't going, I mean, on a mo there, there was a moment in which I felt that I was not going to be able to do it because it was really spicy. If you are going to see that footage, my face turns red in the middle of eating. It was, it was just weird. I, I, I've never lived something like that. But I'm really proud that I was able to try the ulupika sauce 
because as I mentioned, Lupica is the mother of all chili peppers around the world. It began here and then it has spread to all the way through India and then it traveled around the world. And if we are able to try these and promote these, that is so traditional, I think it was fully worth it. Why all of this is so important? As you may know, we have been living on an era that has been not only deforesting our world, but also using tons of plastic and not getting conscious about what is going on with our planet. And that is no planet B. The why defunding all of this information, why making a show out of this? Because not only me, but my generation is fully convinced that using technology all over the world, we can change this situation. We can go one step back and actually change the world and save our planet. All of this in a one show. That's the reason why you should invest in us. Let's save the world hand by hand together. And also because I would be the first woman doing a show like this. <laughs> I'm Lenka Nehmer, I'm 24, and I'm here to change the world. Don Jorge was a retired agronomist and he was really proud on all the work he was doing on the orchard. He told us about how, we, uh, how he was able to feed his family during the quarantine and the lockdown while he was working on the orchard and how even if the, seal, even if the whole city was feeling empty, he was happy to be working there. And this is a lesson for life. He told us about how his family changed the perspective on working on Earth, working on these small spaces around the city to develop the cities of the future, that is, food security and sovereignty. The first time I got the chance to go to La Cauta, I remember meeting Marielita, and then I met Janet. Janet was with us today, and she is such a warm human being. You can see it every time she speaks, every time she hugs, every time she talks about the plants and about the birds and about all the people that has been going to the orchard. And uh, when we were doing all of these activities, we were talking to, to Jorge, every, every single person that passed through our way was like, Janet, hola, Janet, how are you? Because she's always willing to help others. And she has given a lot of her time and a lot of her effort and knowledge for these to be able to be successful. So Jenny, Jenny has helped me so much. She's ha she has given me so much advice. Together with Maria Teresa and Marielita, they have been basically my main professors on what Urban Orchards is trying to reach right now. And I think that is because they truly believe in the cause. They truly believe this is the way we can make the difference from Bolivia to the world. I'm always happy to put my hands on the ground. I'm always happy to be able to do it. You know, lately, as a beauty queen, everything has been so glamorous and uh, so picky. And yes, that's good, that's beautiful, that's wonderful. Working with amazing designers is beautiful. Being a fur shoot is amazing, but nothing compares to the feeling on going down to the earth and having and being able to harvest. Putting your hands on the ground, feeling the texture of the land, feeling how all these vegetables are fresh and clean and light. You can feel every time you, you take one of the slips every time you are putting on some water, how they, they are drinking the water, how they are taking the best on the ground, is amazing. And having the chance to do it today was basically soul healing for me. <laughs> <laughs>